All right, we're going to continue on with some uh, quick powder coating on these little brackets here. I'll show you what one is. These are just for the. I'm going to use silver on these. It's kind of a an aluminum silver. I think that would look good, just to make them look like new. It, but they'll of course look a little shinier and brighter than that. You know, it kind of comes out a little bit almost chrome looking, but uh, they're not going to look chrome. I mean, it'll look good. I figured it's going to last better than anything else. I didn't really want them black. I think they were originally were like a silver, so that'll be fun. We'll do those and then get that ready. For this is for the gas tank. All right, let's look at how these turned out. Huh, kind of nice. Looks like aluminum paint. And that's kind of what I was going to go with anyway. And I figured this will handle some scratching and taking it on and off. You know, whatever, all that sort of thing. So I'm also going to maybe do the bolt heads, huh? Shouldn't I? Maybe I'll do the bolt heads with that. I'm not sure. I don't know, or I'll just put stainless ones in. One or two. Cool. It's turned out the same. All of them turned out the same. I just, I found out that even with this product uh, that you kind of need them to be hot flocked. Um, I don't know if it uh, really works very well if you uh, tried to use an oven. I tried to do one of these things with a, just by heating it afterwards and it just was a mess. So I hot flocked it the next time and it came out like this. You know, pretty neat. So you don't need an oven to do power coating. A lot of it, you know, it's not going to come out. Some things are going to come out better in an oven, but literally there's like a hundred different ways to make an oven. A lot of people think you got to buy a $5,000 oven or whatever. You know, some guys are using old, uh, like household ovens, but there's even easier ways than that. So like, for instance, you could just take your barbecue, your old barbecue, one that you found at a swap meet or whatever, and you could make a cabinet to go above it out of steel. Just if you have a plasma cutter, just cut out a bunch of pieces of steel and make a cabinet that you put above it. That'd work. You could use your infrared lights like this, heat up the surface before or after, and hot flock it or, you know, whatever, however you want to do it. Or like if you're going to powder coat like a large thing, like a bumper, you could use one of those roofing torches and heat it up ahead of time and then hot flock it. And it would, you know, it's, it's a little trickier. I think if you had a better powder coating gun too than this one, I think it kind of shoots out little clumps of stuff at a time. Like if you had a really good powder coating gun, you know, they have the ones that are, you can regulate everything probably come out a little nicer and then I, I'm thinking to do chrome to get chrome to look good you'd probably have to use one of those and and uh, get it on real even that's the key thing getting the powder coat itself on even because I found if you put it on really heavy it comes out with more sheen put it on more light I kind of get like this that's what I was looking for like a dull look so it depends on how much powder is on there. It's, it's it's a little. I don't really know that much about it, so I'm just learning. You know, playing around with this stuff, learning uh, stuff, and this is fine for what I'm doing right now. You, the, really, the you got to think about what you're doing. It's just a powder that melts at a certain temperature, and then adheres to metal. Kind of melts to the metal. That's what it is. So however you get it hot before or after, 
that's up to you. But I found that if you remelt it afterwards, so if you get it hot and then you try and get it hot again, yeah, it doesn't work. So you want to get it all at the same time. Some guys will preheat and then hot flock and then rebake, and you can do that. But if you put it in there for too long, too, in the oven or too hot, it'll start to bubble, you know, or melt. Because plastic basically is what it is. It's what it is inside that can is just plastic, all this stuff here. Just plastic that melts when it dries. I think that's what it is. Anyway. That's my opinion. I don't know. Really, I'm, I'm new at this. I don't know anything. But it's fun. It's great to have one of these little Harbor Freight things uh, just to do some little projects like this. Some of the other things we're going to do. Do a couple more things now. All right, so that looks pretty neat. Just so that, it, you know, it's like good protection for this thing. I mean, it's, look how rusty it is. It was, it was pitted this side, and then this side wasn't that bad. And this side, I wanted to be able to read the VIN still, so I didn't put it on too heavy to try and fill all that pitting. Because you can puddle the powder coating on and it'll go on thicker and it'll kind of sheen up a little bit so that's a trick of not putting it on too thick for this thing so there, there's definitely method to the madness but you can see all that pitting in there so i wanted that to still be there so anyway so you could still see the vin number that's right here and yeah, it's under my thumb but yeah you know what i mean all right, so I got the inside of the ashtray. I mean, you're never going to get paint in there, but this powder coat should go in there pretty good because it's magnetically, you know, it's the electrostatic deal. So I'm going to go ahead and powder coat that. I don't want to put too thick of a coat on or it won't fit. So just enough on there to make it colored and look good and clean. And then I'm never going to use that again for an ashtray, that's for sure. That makes that look like brand new, huh? And then inside, of course, when I hit this, I got it, you know, I got too much on that area, but I just wanted to get everything coated inside. Wasn't particular about it being looking like perfect in there, but yeah, at least it's got something on there. It'll never rust. It's out of the weather. And when you open this up, it'll look kind of good. Put your change in there and you're going to scratch it. It's kind of neat. How about that? All right, I put a light coat on this thing. A little heavier on the inside. It's a little tricky to get it on. That way, it's not supposed to look like chrome or anything. The inside, yeah, I'm just going to leave powder coated. And then the outside, I'm going to sand this down. and use it as a primer and paint it. You can paint over powder coating. Um, just going to sand it down and prime it. and It's bonded on there really good. So I've painted over powder coat a lot of times. It works great. So I figured have this underneath while, while, you know, while I've got the silver out. So when you open this up, it'll all be one color if you look behind and then everything will be all the blue on the outside. All right, I figured I better show you guys all this stuff because I don't know, I did another speedometer rebuild and some things didn't are different on all of these. So maybe I'll run into some different stuff. But this one here, the little cap came off so I'll just super glue that on here when I'm all done. So it's very old. So the first thing I want to do is remove these veins. Which I think that's what they call them. I don't know. This one's broken. The other screw over here is missing. And it's broken. So that's no good. 
I remove this, of course this little piece of stuff comes out. It's not that bad. It's got the red and the green on it. Actually, oh, that's the green one. Here's the red one right here for the oil light. Just gotta make sure you get them on the right ones. So you can just replace the little plastic pieces with notebook, like those colored notebooks you get from Walmart for your kids. The clear colored, you just use some of that plastic that's on that, that put those on there. That's how I fix that. But what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to grease it because this, this will solve. And listen, do this at your own risk. It, it, you got to be very careful with these things. If you do it, like you don't want to mess with a couple things. You don't want to mess with the spring. To get this off, all I do is pry on this little part right here and lift it up. And sometimes it's really, like this one was really stuck on here. It's too hard to film it. Or I'll just kind of lift this around and then pull this thing off. And to get it back on, you just kind of walk it around. It takes a little bit of little bit of patience and time. But, uh, what you don't ever want to mess with is this little spring here in the front. Once you screw that one up, your speedometer is never going to work right. So take that off like that. And uh, so take that off like that. And each one of these is a little bit different. This is a really old one, so it's probably going to be ooh, much different than the others. It is. So this part, what I'll do too, is I'm going to take this, clean this up, and typically I'll paint this. Um, but I might just powder coat it. That's why I wanted to do this now. I'll do a light powder coat on it, then it's all brand new again. As long as I don't get too thick of a film somewhere where I can't, or I don't want the stuff. Like, it's just going to wrap around and go inside there and everything. So this one, these screws come out from this side. Normally, they'll come out from this side. So, yeah. And then when you push out this little gear, once you take this thing off, this little gear comes off here. You, you push out this little guy right here, then this shaft comes out and you put grease on that shaft. And that's where, that's what makes them all seize up and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these with some pliers and twist them out because I don't want to. Normally, I'd have to pull the needle and pull the face off, and then that spring can get messed with this behind there. A little spring behind there. I don't want to deal with that. So I'll just take these two off. Normally, they'd be from this side on most years. Take those two off, and then I take this off, and then it's really hard. you got to get the needle to line up, but there's a little tiny hole here. So it's it's not that hard, but... Where the problem always is, where they seize up, is right here. Well, this one's seized. Yeah, this one isn't going to work anyway. Um, where it seized up is right in here. The grease just comes off of that shaft, and that's always where the issue is. So, I mean, if I can get these loose any other way, maybe I'll get my pocket knife in there. I'm going to loosen these up. I'll bring you right back in. When you get those out, probably just use little pliers. Take them out and then go from there. So I'll just do this. 
Do that one. I already loosened to make sure they were loose, so I'm just showing you what I did. I'll take this out. Take this one out. I've never taken one apart this early, so I don't know. Okay. It's like all the others. Take that sucker out. Now where the problem is, is this thing is seized up. So I've got to take this little guy here out. What is that? Definitely different than the other gears. Hopefully it comes out with these. Working the unknown. I don't know. Usually they have like a little ball and you pop the ball out and then the shaft comes out. This one's definitely different. All right, I'm going to look at it. I'll bring you back, back in. All right, yeah, this thing that's different about this one is it has this little screw here. I've never seen one like this. But you see that little tiny, let me get you guys up closer so you can really see. You see that little tiny orifice right there? That needs to line up with this pin. Let me get you guys up to where you can see it. The pin that's down in the bottom of that little dish. So right here, there's a little pin. That has to go in that little tiny hole. And if you miss, it won't work. Okay, so this is the issue. You always end up with these things. It's trying to put it back together. You got to get that little pin to line up. Sucker's frozen, which is, they're usually not this bad. This one's super frozen, so I wanted to soak it in penetrating oil. I have to get this little gear out of here too because this thing won't slide out until that gear is out of there. Like I said, usually there's a little ball and you just pop a little ball out of a hole and this one's, again, yeah, this one's different, so. Sure how to get that fella out of there. First thing I would do is I'm going to soak this whole thing with penetrating oil, so. I'm going to do that right now. I'll bring you guys back in when I get that done. All right, let's see what it looks like. See, 12 of 54. And then this is kind of like a dull aluminum or maybe a little bit nicer than that. Kind of a... It looks like a like an anodized type finish. So it makes it look pretty good, like original looking to me. I, it may be a little shinier than it should be, but that's all right. All right, so here's what we got going on here. So this thing here was frozen, right? So off camera, what I did is I, I didn't want to break my concentration. I want to be real careful. This is a very old speedometer. I don't want to have to find another one. But I heated this, I heated up right here with a torch. So right here. So all the way around the threads, I heated up. I got it really nice and hot and then carefully grabbed a a rag put it around here and use pliers really carefully and moved it around and all of a sudden what happened is and I also had a puddle of oil inside here so I just kind of put some of that penetrating oil in there and just watched it kind of boil 
and then that just kind of so that what happens is the grease inside here grease is basically a lubricant like oil with a thickener in it I don't know kind of like to paste it I don't know what they use for a thickener but they use something to thicken oil and then what happens is eventually the oil kind of goes away from it and all, all that's left is the thickener so you know it what happens is inside here it just all that happens and then it just seizes up from lack of lubrication and after you do this usually they're fine but uh, really I need to take this pin out I'm not really sure how to because usually I, I, I probably think I can take a punch and very carefully hit it and I think that pin will come out but it's obviously in there pretty good because I can't even twist it with a pair of pliers I'm trying to twist it it's in there it's been in there since 1954 so it's kind of in place and I don't want to break that little rod I'm going to try maybe carefully just hammering it with a tapping on with the thing with a punch and see if it knocks this guy out because there's because there's a little set of like uh, gear teeth on this thing and then there's like a little I don't know these are both worm gears and it seems like this one's working because I can see it spin and now look at how easy it spins but I still think it'll seize up from lack of lubrication if I don't or if I don't get something in there and I don't think I can get anything adequately in there if I just I could shove grease in here I guess if I can't get it off I'll shove grease in there and I'll take some oil and kind of I have some three-in-one oil which works pretty good and I'll put some of that on the shaft maybe it'll find the thickener and kind of stand there for a while anyway we play around with it a little more and I'll bring you back in all right success I just used the center punch and first I did is grab it on the outside of this thing and just started twisting it around with some penetrating lubricant on it and then I just took my center punch punched on the end of this shaft and I just pushed right out very carefully and just be very patient with these things and now this thing should come right out so you can see right here there's a little spot right there where the grease was that seized up so I'm going to clean that off and you can see there's like a little it's a little recessed area for the grease to stay in. You know, they don't expect these things to live this long. And uh, it did somehow. So I'll grease this shaft. And I'll also add some 3-in-1 oil to it. Not too much, just to kind of thin up the grease a little bit. Give it some lubricant, better lubrication. And put this back in there and then push this little thing back in there just gently hammer it back in and uh, that should take care of the problem shouldn't do that again so I'll grease this shaft this is where they go bad right here the shaft loses its lubrication that just the grease just gets old and then it seizes up eventually sometimes they'll start wiggling like this when it's going like that it's it's starting to go and once it does that enough eventually it'll start to seize up and it'll break your cable and then you'll end up with this problem right here so that's going to get fixed right now and we'll bring you right back in all right so i got this whole thing back together i put the shaft in first made sure it lined up very carefully there's no hurry there and then that's pushed back in place. Hopefully you guys, that was in the frame. So that's all it takes right there. Now I've got all the excess grease off of here. 
You want to make sure it's clean, but you want to have a little bit of grease on that, uh, on the odometer gear. And then what I do is I'm just going to take a little bit of this. I've been just putting a little droplet in and then kind of mixing it. So it kind of mixes in with the grease and thins it out a little bit because the grease I'm using is a little too thick. It's uh, disc brake grease, which, you know, it's a little too thick. You know, it might give it problems quicker. So I'm just going to use what I've got. And then it's high temp disc brake, disc, disc brake grease. So it's a little thicker than the other grease. So I'm just adding a little bit of oil to it. And then just spinning it in there. I've worked the whole shaft. It's all the way through it. And uh, it spins really nice and easily now. And this wheel is clean. It's really important. You can't have any debris or anything on this little wheel. If you do, all of a sudden you'll see your speedometer go bow, just pop up because it'll have a little piece of debris in there. So everything's got to be pretty clean. It's not that crazy. It's not like it's not that big a deal, really. But it's best to just keep it nice and clean. Put this thing back on here. Make sure it's centered on the little thing. Just be really slow and careful putting this thing together. Don't get anything crooked. If you do, it won't work. Spin it. Okay. This is going to be adjusted too, but I don't mess with any of that stuff. All I'm doing is getting it back to where it used to be. I don't know what the adjustment is on that or why. And I'm not going to try and figure it out today. So I need a little bit of grease. I'll put that on afterwards on this piece. I don't want to get my face dirty, so I'm just being careful here. I got to clean, make sure there's no debris inside the dish. You don't want to use brake spray on this. So spray it on a rag or something. Because it'll take the paint off of the, uh, off the face. So you just got to be careful. Don't use brake spray or electrical spray or any of that stuff. that dish nice and clean now it's for the tricky part okay don't want to break my needle it's all just super careful stuff so then you take this in here the pin goes in this thing's magnetic too, so it's really exciting to put in place. I could spend 10 minutes on this or two hours on this part. I don't know. Normally I would bring it back to, you know, a lot of guys will do it. They'll bring it back to zero too. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I, I like the miles that are on it. Let me see what it says. 25,000. I think it's got 125,000 original miles in this car. So. I think it's centered. But I won't know until I test it. Usually when you get this thing and it's not. It's still moving like that. Real freely. It's usually centered. And the little pin found the center. I'm doing this upside down so it's a little weird. Normally the screws are on the other side, so. A lot of stuff in the early cars uh, was kind of really hard to work on. And I think that they figured out during the manufacturing process that that was kind of unnecessary and then came up with better ways to do things. Notice I'm not touching the face and I want to get fingerprints on it. 
I think I got grease on my fingers a little bit. I don't want to get that face dirty. I'll tighten that up. Check my, check my needle again. Make sure it's not cockeyed in there. Right here is where it will let you know you got it crooked. If that thing doesn't move freely, the needle isn't centered right. So I'm going to say it's right right now. I just need to put a little bit of grease on there. So I'll do that. And uh, I got grease already on this gear. I'm going to put a little bit on there, just a little tiny bit. And then we should be able to test this thing out. And I'll put new of these little squares on here. I'll show you that in a second. So I'll put grease on this. I'll bring it back in. Uh, for the next thing, I usually use these. Either these index dividers or the colored notebooks. If you can get the really cheap little colored notebooks, I just couldn't find any. They have a thicker plastic and I like those better. But if we use these, what we have to do is put multiple layers so it's thick enough. Um, in fact, you can have something that's almost not very transparent you can use. And then we'll cut up a bunch of layers and then we'll put it over where they had this. So the green one, we need the larger rectangle. The red one, we need a smaller square. So that's how it was before. In fact, it's backwards of mine. Usually I had my green light is over here and my red lights are over there. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. I guess, I don't know, we're the opposite that year. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm just going to do it as long as the green one uh, goes for oil. And the red one is for uh, charging, then I'm fine with it. So, anyway, I'll cut these up and then we'll take a look. All right, so test it real quick. Seems like it's working. And then put it together. So my green cover and the two lights, one open. All right, so if I'm forgetting anything, hopefully I'm not. Yeah, I gotta put this on next. Some of these are harder than others. You want to make sure that the tube here lines up with your brights. The, uh, on some of them, you also have to put a brights blue thing. Not this one. The bus ones, I think you got to do that. Come on. It's hitting that thing. that tube right there getting that tube to get in there sometimes is a bit of a pain there it goes I actually like like to push right in the center 
so I don't fingerprint it. Put my finger on the center of the needle. Put my screws in. Oh, lovely. The thing came off of that one. Come on. Do you have to get crooked? Okay. All right, so sorry your hands, my hands in the way, I'm sure. Well, finger slipped off. It looks like I can see blue through the end of there, so I got that thing lined up. lined up with the blue for the brights. Now, put this thing back on. It only has one screw, so, and it's an old one. Be gentle with it all. And it's going to be fun when I got powder coating the threads. it first. Okay. Use the in and out method. Put it in a little bit, take it back out. She goes. Put it on the right side up. Uh, and for the tricky part is just uh, Hopefully this goes on well because that powder coat thickness. I didn't want to put too much powder on here I'll finish cleaning it when I get it up well, You don't really see that part anyway, but This fella around. Okay. 
That's the method. We'll just sometimes it's a little messier. Chipping off the powder coat a little bit on the edge. Uh, there it goes. Just lip it around, and that's it. This one's already on. Okay. That's it. It's all done. Let's put it in the car. It's all ready. All right. Cool. Ready to go. All right, speedometer's in. Yeah. Looks all right. And the wiring for the speedometer is all hooked up now. Just got to do a little cleanup in there and get everything straight and nice and clean. And it's all pretty good, but just going to tweak some stuff around. I got to put the... Uh, wiper m wiper switch in so that's still got to go in and this wire should be tugged up here I pulled it down to do something and this goes in here the wiper switch goes next to it I think it's I think it that one goes closest I don't really know on the old ball. I don't I haven't had one of these things since I was a teenager so I don't remember all the stuff so Anyway, we'll go ahead and just leave that alone for now. We'll bring you come back to that. Well, I thought these were silver originally, but they're not. They were actually black on this year. So maybe the early ovals had black brackets. And also these two, the other overrider brackets, were black. Were black. black. Um, bumpers with overriders was on the the birth certificate so it had it had them and I think these are the original brackets and they were black so I'm gonna go with black again so anyway we'll do that up and talk to you later Well, it turned out all right. It's just got, you know, they're powder coated. Turned out pretty good. It's supposed to be matte. It looks kind of, kind of like semi-gloss or something. But anyway, 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. Good enough. I figure I'll do them powder coat. I let them cool now. This one here is getting pretty cool. I took it off here. And, uh, yeah, you got to kind of reheat it sometimes just to get it to flow out all the way because if you put too much powder on, just all oh, depends. I'm going to have to kind of shake it to get it to come out sometimes. I, I don't know. Maybe I need to turn the air pressure up. I don't know, if I turn it up too much, it'll blow this thing all over the place. So I don't know. I don't really know. I'm just doing the best I can with that machine. I'll probably get a better one. It'd probably work better. But that thing's fine. It does a lot of neat stuff, I think, for a homeowner guy. Hot flocking works good. All right, well, that's the first time I've had the door shut. I guess the color looks right. So I did my job right, I guess. People were worried about the spray. Once I buff both surfaces, there's a very slight difference, and I think that's the reason. So once it's all sheen even, and I finish, I haven't even finished polishing that quarter. Um, and I just realized I only got three hubcaps. I thought I had four. These are all trying to, you know, I get used ones and I just straighten them. So I'll find another used one. I, I saw a couple at the last swap meet and I would have bought them if I would have known that I was missing something. So yeah, anyway, kind of look the same. 
Got some stuff to fix there. The wiring's all in for the back. So it's gonna hold me up there. Now I've got the fight of this thing. I'm just gonna have to just uh, sit there and tinker, push that thing in. And I need some more parts and I don't have any of them. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, it's looking pretty good though. It's weird if you look at it from far away. Let's look it over here, see if it's you shows it on camera. Everything looks a little different on camera. I noticed you can see the ring around where I sprayed on camera. You cannot see that in person, really. I mean, it's it's there, but it's not a, a color difference. If you look here from further away, look how the roof gets really dark. So it gets really dark from far away. And then you get up close. So if you look at old photos, if you can find any. Um, or color ones that have original paint, you'll kind of see that same look that's on here. And I don't see that on the other cars, and that's what I was trying to get when I matched this. I wanted to make sure that it had that, even if it wasn't exactly the right color, at least it had that part of it that I really liked on the Strato Silver. So, yeah, that's Strato Silver. Looking in the camera, I look at look in the camera and I look at the car because <laughs> I want to see what you guys are seeing and also see what I'm seeing. So I once I once I get that thing on, then I can put the deck lid on. The big spring will be out of the way. I'll have all that parts, those parts on. And once I get the front hood one on, then I can put the front hood on on the gas tank in there too. I'll probably which I need to paint. Which I haven't painted the gas tank. Not a big deal. The one that I, it's in super good shape. It was already painted. Somebody painted, but there's a giant run right across the front of it. So I'm like, nah, I think I'll fix that. Car looks too nice for that. So anyway, pretty good, huh? I think it's come along. I got the hood piece on. I haven't got it all worked out and adjusted. I just threw some oil in it and blew all the sand out as best I could too. So I sandblasted it, powder coated it. That's how the dash looks. I still haven't got the knobs in there for the for the. Uh, I still got to do the pulls, get them in there. Shoot, it's gonna take two people to do that. I just realized, and it's not fun. So I don't know if I can do it by just reaching around this way. And get it in place with my head underneath and find the hole. It's really hard to do on those oval window ones with a little screw going up. Been a while, but I remember doing those and that not being very easy. Yeah. It looks pretty neat. Especially with the hubcaps on. Yeah, what do you think of that? Black running boards going on it too. We're not going color. No, I'm just going to say black. I want it to have that old look. And then I'm going to put the bright chrome on it. So it'll be a little bit brighter. I have all the original window trim. And I'm really going to look at it close. Because I, I really would like to run the original stuff for the windows. Rather than buy the new um just because it is original and it's still there i mean how many 54s have original chrome so i think i'm gonna have to do that even if it doesn't look quite as good I'm gonna have to do it do the original chrome and you know the other thing just so you know it fits better you get the aftermarket stuff and you have to to get it to really go on easy you have to bend it and tweak it and get it exactly so you set it over the groove and it's exactly the same bends so if you're trying to put that stuff in and you see it doesn't uh want to go it keeps popping out and stuff like that it's because the if it the bends are a little off then it won't it'll just keep giving you fighting if you get it to where it's bent exactly perfect it'll just go it'll go in a lot easier the chrome stuff's a pain but it looks it looks good i mean we used to take it all out you know Back in the old days, but now, no, it's all 
back to original. That's the way I like it now. So all the cow bug stuff. I, I don't think I'm gonna do that again. I think I'm just gonna stay with doing this. I kind of like them this way. Yeah. I don't think I'll lower it. No, no wheels. No, no. I just leave it stock. So anyway, I've had lowered cars and. I just, you know, scraping on everything, especially something this old. Yeah, all you do is hit something going down the freeway. Some somebody drops a ladder out of their truck, and you're screaming. You know, you live in California. That's going to happen. So you bent up your whole front end, and this thing will just drive right over it. Yeah. Boop boop. It's over. This guy here. Wow! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right, let's try it again here. Wow! Stupid. Wait, wait. I don't. See if that works. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen some pretty ridiculous thumbnails, so I figured I'd try and make one or something. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.